Welcome to the Child Care Genius Podcast, the world's leading authority on child care marketing, mindset, expansion, and profitability. Each episode will feature interviews with the brightest minds in the child care industry to guide you into becoming a smarter business leader. Our hosts have opened 10 schools while raising five children. They are certified business coaches and are the top selling childcare business book authors of all time. This episode is sponsored by Childcare Genius Marketing. Let Childcare Genius Marketing help you get fully enrolled and fully staffed. Visit childcaregenius.com for more details. Let's welcome to the Childcare Genius Podcast our hosts. Brian and Carol Dupre. Welcome to the Child Care Genius Podcast. We're your hosts, Brian and Carol Dupre. Ready for another exciting episode today. We've got a great guest, really mm-hmm. nice lady uh, from Louisiana. She talks a little bit different than us, got a little Southern drawl. But she's a real sweetheart. Her name is Tafta Miller, and she owns two schools down in mm-hmm. Monroe, Louisiana, which is in the northeast corner. And she's going to share a very interesting story. It's a very heartfelt story of her her struggles, her marriage struggles, her business struggles. And I think it might help somebody out there resonate with mm-hmm. them. Uh, just a reminder before we get started here, dude, if you have not signed up, uh, to get on our wait list for our Child Care Genius Live Conference in Las Vegas, April 14th, 15th, and 16th of next year. Our wait list is growing. And um, we offer our wait list every single month an opportunity to buy tickets at $200 off full price tickets. So if you want to save $200 on a ticket and get it for the same price as we sold it for last year, um, you even, uh, sorry, better than last year, cheaper than last year, Get on our wait list, childcaregenius.com. Go to the conference tab and go to the Child Care Genius Live uh, tab on that and say, I'd like to join the wait list. It's free to add your name to the wait list. And uh, two times each month, we'll give you an opportunity to buy tickets off the wait list for $200 off each ticket. Save a whole lot of money for a conference where we provide meals there. We provide breakfast, mm-hmm. rather, uh, and snacks, coffee, lots and lots and lots of coffee. And a great venue at the Golden Nugget in Las Vegas. And how about hotel rooms for $75 a night? We forgot about that. Yeah. Really good deal. So get your name on that wait list now and we'll talk more. So again, Tap the Miller is our guest and is so excited. Be prepared for an amazing episode. Let's get Tapped on the line. Hi, Tapta. Welcome to the Child Care Genius Podcast. How are you today? I'm doing very well today. I tapped. It's so nice to have you on. I just love talking to you. You're the sweetest, sweetest person in the world. Thank you. I, when I've coached you, uh, I was very impressed with your schools down there. And I said, you know what? I'm going to have her on the podcast so she could share her story. Um, but a lot of people probably don't know anything about Tap the Miller and about your school. So tell our audience a little bit of like what your school name is, where you're from, and maybe a little more about your background before you got into child care business. Okay. I'm Tapta Miller. I'm from Monroe, Louisiana, which is the northeast corner of Louisiana. A lot of people just go straight to New Orleans and that's that's way down there. <laughs> So Northeast Louisiana, and um, I have two centers in Monroe and um, a little bit back of background prior to my new, my two centers that I have now. Um, so I began in child care probably at the age of 17 in a church setting. Um, I left there, went to another church setting and worked there got married at the young age of 19. And at that point, I took on another job working at a bank on Mondays and Fridays, because that's your normal busy days. So in between there, I wanted to work at this center that was in, right, literally a block down the street. So eventually that dream of working there came true. So I worked there, worked at the bank, and was in school. So started college in dental hygiene and finally realized that 
my back was not going to allow me to do all that work with my hands. So back in the day, we had a catalog we had to flip through to find our courses. <laughs> so I'm dating myself and flipped through and there was an associate's degree in daycare and nursery management. And that's where I found I was going to get my associate's degree. So I was working two jobs, married, getting a degree. Um, the childcare setting, I never really worked with infants, but toddlers, preschool, eventually moved up to school age kids, led the summer program one summer. And then once it got closer to me graduating, of course, I'm starting to look at being a business owner. Started searching, you know, our communities and found myself in Start, Louisiana. And if you don't know anything about Start, Louisiana, it is home of the cotton fields and Tim McGraw. <laughs> so it was me, my little building that I found. It was a family friend of ours. Dad had it. My dad went in, remodeled it, made me four classrooms. It had a kitchen, an office. Perfect. Licensed for 42 kids. Spent 18 years at that location and saw many highs, many lows. Um, I don't want to get too emotional, but my babies grew up there. And I lived at 6.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. most days. Take a deep breath. Yeah. In 2011, things kind of started spiraling down. We lost a GM plant. We lost a regional state farm, large, large office. Um, and my clientele started declining as well. So I decided at that point that I would put it up for sale and quietly put it up for sale. But I guess somebody was watching and it was one of my parents and she's like, what is this? And I'm like, so then I had to let it out that, you know, I was looking to sell. It wasn't an easy phase of life and 2015 I was losing my center I was losing my marriage and just felt like everything was lost um March of 2015 I got a phone call from the lady that I worked at her center and she was ready to retire. So I'm back to thinking this is where I'm I'm going to. Um, so that was March of 15. Um, separated in my marriage. In June, I decided just to give it all to God. Because that was all I could do at this point. Once I decided, hey, I'm going to close, I'll just pay the building with the money that I'm, you know, going to work at this other location because she was licensed for 97. And I was like, I, I can do this. And once I just gave it all over to God, I had a buyer. That was like July the 1st. And I was out by July 31st. And August the 1st, I started back at the place I began in 1997. And just to rewind a little bit back to 1997, I was 21 years old opening my center. So um, you have to be 21 to be an owner and a director in Louisiana. Back then, you had to be. So 18 years, um, I found myself back at the location that I left to open my other center. I was back in my community, still about five or 10 minutes from the house, but 
my kids community, the schools that we live in, where we live, my church, everything back, you know, where I felt like my mission field was going to be for the rest of my time. And this center was kind of the underdog. It was the cheap child care and the curb appeal was not too good. So I had a lot of work ahead, ahead of me. Um, and this was 2015. In 2018, I rebranded. I moved away from her name and we became the Cub House. And it's Cubs because our high schools are the Lions, the Tigers, and the Panthers. And we care for the Cubs. And so it's the Cub House and we had five little blue buildings. So the kids think of them as houses and they always thought I lived there in the house, but <laughs> we're always there. So that's where we rebranded and became the Cub House for my first location back here in Monroe. Wow. Now you share some adversity there, but noticed you kept getting up. Yes. And that is what a good child care owner does. You, you never fail until you quit. And I do want to make note that my marriage also was restored in August of 2015. Wow. Good for you. In 29 years now. Yes. So good. A lot of prayer there and a lot of answered yeah. prayers. So we're thankful yes. for that for sure. Yes. Why are you different from other centers in your area? So I'm going to go back to the OG, the original first location. And I kind of, I kind of say it's your, your cookie cutter place, like infants, toddlers, preschool, school age. Um, I would say one of our unique uniquenesses there is I came to that location with tenured senior employees. And to this day, two of them are still there 19 years and 24 years. I can say that my staff at that location sets us apart because they knew it before I really knew it. <laughs> I knew it, but they weren't there when I was back there at the original place. But um, I would say, you know, compiling all of our experience together that it really stands out with educated teachers there. Um, one of the other differences is each class has their own building. So we have six buildings and that kind of keeps each age group in a different building and you don't have to walk through a main hall to get to them. So that's the first location. Um, we really don't have any big uniqueness there besides maybe being the closest to the university um, and also where some of our competitors do, did not take care of publicly funded children. That was one of my main goals was taking care of fund publicly funded children and foster children. So our first location, that's a few of our, di our uniquenesses. Now my second location is gonna have all the things. <laughs> so um, in 2021, in August, this gymnastics facility and preschool center just closed like no heads up nothing I was like okay I gotta get I I gotta get in here what will you let me lease it and it was no and in three weeks I bought it so I bought it on my birthday um we gutted it cleaned it up deep cleaned and opened it up to serve infants to school age where they were only pre-k and it's in a location but only 10 minutes from my first one, but it hits a whole different area of clientele. And between the both of my locations, we serve five different elementary schools. Um, but the second location, we opened it back up, caring for infants to, to preschool and after school. We're one of the largest, if not the largest summer camp facilities in our area. It's also known for birthday parties. There's a 2,000 square foot indoor playground. And number one question, are you still going to do birthday parties? I'm like, yes, we are. I just, I got to get there. 
So we now host a regular birthday party, a glow in the dark, dark birthday party, Nerf gun parties, wow. and the the all new with my daughter's vision. We just installed a sensory gym that is for children that are on the spectrum, and the sensory gym like just took off like crazy um in the fall of 23 she's in ot school she had a vision for a sensory gym and i decided that i would invest in that for her she's also a therapist that comes to our center to see children through one of the local um partnerships that we have so she comes and sees the children, but she pulls them from the classroom and they go to the sensory gym. So she works with them inside that gym. And the goal one day is for her to have that on site with us. Whether she performs the clinic within us, we don't know yet, but the sensory gym is going to be a huge asset to us and for families to feel comfortable as long as we see that we can take care of their child if they're special needs. We have children that are nonverbal. We have children that are high functioning. Just, I want to be available to all children. And as long as we can care for them in a safe manner, I, I will try them in our care. And so that second location has all the perks. Oh, yes. And we're in Louisiana. We have a splash pad. So we have a splash pad as well. And nobody around here has a splash pad either. So I would say this is just, it's 13,000 square feet. That's not in counting the outside area with a splash pad and three different playgrounds. And we are building a kitchen and a cafeteria right now. So wow, it's, it's 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 growing <laughs> so that big for Louisiana. <laughs> yes yeah, so that that is my uni uniquenesses you know for my area and I feel like we the vision is there and we're we're just on the tracks with the train <laughs> awesome how has coaching helped you think differently about your business I think that having a coach and the accountability of asking me where I'm struggling. Well, first we ask about our wins and then we talk about our struggles. And I think the coaching aspect of it is just a check-in. Sometimes there are therapists. <laughs> it just depends on what's going on. But I would say that the coaching kind of keeps you in line with, hey, this is what I was struggling with last month. Where's it at now? Or, hey, did you implement this system? Um, and I think looking back over just the accountability of having a coach, checking in, seeing where we're at, giving that advice, and then redoing it the next month is just checking in where are we at, where are we going and just keeping that accountability and that check-in is just kind of, I'm a person that I have to have a deadline or it's not going to get done. <laughs> like procrastinate to the deadline, but that's how I work. And I try not to, but um, I think the coaching has really helped me just to stay online with, what I need to, to accomplish month after month. So Tapta, where do you see yourself three years, four or five years from now? What are some of your long-term goals? I would say three years from now, I, so we do have a star rating in Louisiana. I want to just maintain one of my locations is four stars. One is the newest one is three stars, but it's our first year. So we've got growth there. But I really, in three years, just maintaining that high quality care, being known for the best in the community, um, and 
three years isn't very far off, but I think just continuing to put our name out there and what we do for our community is is what I want to see in three years. I'm not going anywhere in three years. So I don't have that kind of, <laughs> of like in three years, I want to be retired. No, but I think just getting better every year and maintaining that high quality in both of my centers is one of my, you know, goals for three years. You attended our CCG live conference in Las Vegas this year and also our leverage conference conference in Jamaica last year what yep. did you get out of each conference so I had to kind of pull out my notes to go back because there was so much um I think Jamaica really helped me when y'all pulled out the mission statement and the vision and made us sit there like I'm a work on it right there kind of person like give me time and just being able to sit there, and I had a mission statement, but I tweaked it. So, um, and understanding what my what a mission and a vision is, and what the difference was, and I copied and pasted it and put it in my notes in my phone because I wanted to make sure that I continued to use what I came up with in Jamaica, and you know, my mission statement, and I'm just going to read it because it's a little long, is to establish a distinguished educational center that offers exceptional care and guidance to children, thereby catering to the needs of working families and full-time students. We aim to provide a nurturing environment where children can thrive and develop to their fullest potential. Now, my vision for my programs is to provide a high-quality early childhood education center to create a safe and environment, a safe and healthy environment for the children to develop socially, emotionally, intellectually, physically, preparing them for kindergarten. And my centers um, offer comfort to families, enabling them to work, attend school, or engage in rec recreational activities. So I nailed that down in Jamaica, and that was one of my, you know, that's it, and that's going forward is going to be it. So that's my number one thing I got from Jamaica. Now, Vegas, I got two little things. There was a lot from Vegas, I will say. There was a lot of nuggets from Vegas, and I narrowed it down. And this this kind of goes with what my, you know, my story that I just shared. Um, Joy shared, and Joy is my coach, failure is an opportunity to grow. So where I felt like I was a failure at my first location, now I've had the opportunity to, to, to grow. And now I have two locations and changing bad habits that I had before, which I do kind of say 42 is a hard number to, to pay the bills, <laughs> you know, just looking back. But um, I really pulled that from joy that, you know, that I've grown from failure. Not to say I'm not going to fail anymore, um, but I, I liked that. And then Michael said, plan your day and work your plan. And I try to time block my time. I try to look at it on Sunday night before the week starts. And then I try every day to look at the next day. So I know what the next day brings for me. So I would say Jamaica and Vegas, I got lots of lots of things out of both of them and I love the books that y'all make for us because I can go pull the book and look back and it's not lost somewhere <laughs> so I love that awesome thank you for sharing that so COVID was hard on a lot of owners mm -hmm. what's been the most challenging for you as an owner since we've come out of COVID I would say one of my largest tasks which I only had the one center during COVID um, for two years but I would say one of the hardest things for me, and this might be kind of weird, but it was just the ever-changing health policies of when you can come and when you can't come and do you have to quarantine and not quarantine? Do you send the class home? Do you, you know, 
Like that was the biggest thing for me was policing families on illnesses and when they could attend and not attend. And we still get it even now because it's still around. But I feel like that was just my number one challenge was here's the diagram and here's what you got to follow the yes or no. Because I feel like I had, I am the president of our Child Care Association of Louisiana. And during COVID, we moved to having a weekly call. So every Thursday we had a call, we had a check-in. And that kept me on top of the ever-changing policies. Um, and, and people would come back, you know, they don't listen to it until it's them that's in the situation, which I've been there too. It's like, oh gosh, what... What is it today? Five days, 10 days? What, where are we at? You know, but I am thankful for our association and being involved in association to keep us on task with whatever COVID was bringing towards us. Um, I would say, secondly, is staffing at this point. Um, I only lost one staff to COVID. Um, and I say lost. She had a fear, so she went home of bringing something home to her husband. The rest of my staff I retained. And I would say that that is amazing. I did not close my school and all of my competitors closed. I stayed open. I marketed for essential workers. And I just split the rooms to this nine to one, put shower curtains up and I made it. I made it. I never closed. Um, but now we we're looking at staffing as a hardship and i would say they're wanting higher wages they're wanting you know perks for doing their job where before you just got paid to do the best now it's like i attended every day this month do i get a bonus you know so i think and that's exhausting our leaders now is all the the work that we're having to do with performance scores. So I would say there's a few little things there that are still lingering from COVID and kind of my pain points from COVID. I'm glad you brought up Taft to the uh, ever-changing rules because we coach people in 50 states with 50 different sets yeah. of rules. Mass here, no mass here. Vaccine here, no vaccine there. Mm -hmm. It was all over the place. I never saw any difference in any of the the closure rates or the COVID cases in any of the states. So I don't know if any, I mean, they, they were all doing the best they could, um, yeah. but it was frustrating for the coaches side to see once one center that closed for three months and our, our clients losing everything they had struggling mm -hmm. and other centers just busting at the seams. We stayed closed. We stayed open the whole time. We never mm -hmm. closed, but we had clients in Massachusetts had to close for three months. Yeah. And it wasn't an option. And it was just crazy to see the wide range. So I'm glad you stayed open. That's a yeah. testimony yeah. to your persistence. Yeah. And a lot of people are like, why aren't you closed? And the other one's closed. And I said, we weren't mandated to close. Nobody made them close. And I stayed open and I just found my market. And I started marketing for the essential workers. And my goal was to retain them and keep them once the other places, you know, open back up. So it's it's closing been a blessing in disguise thing. closing would have been the easy play you know you sit back all your workers sit back and they could you know collect the check and they, no parents still needed care yeah your mission yeah. was critical you know mission critical and that was more important to you same thing with us we're like the parents still they still need cops we still need people to treat these people in mm -hmm. hospitals you know we take care of a lot of doctors and nurses and we can't leave those people yes. hanging. Right. Yeah. Good job. Proud Thank of you, you for that. Thank you. If you had it to do all over again, what would you do differently? So I thought back to this young 21-year-old opening her own business back in 1997. <laughs> I was picking earlier about back in the 1900s. <laughs> um, I don't really know what I would change, but I will say this. I wish we would have had coaches and mentors back then because I feel like that would have helped me tremendously learn how to 
do finances. They don't teach you that, you know, how to run a business. I had to kind of adopt my parents' um, CPA that in hindsight was not a very good CPA for me. And um, I did payroll and now I have a payroll company and they, they help me pay taxes and my CPA is in touch with them. So going back, I wish I would have known more, but here I am now, 30 years later, um, knowing what I know now, I just, um, I, I can't change what happened in 1997 to 2015, but the road is not easy and it's hard and we grow from those hard experiences. And that's all we can do is keep going forward. And my main thing right now is put myself at the table of the people that I want to be when I grow up and put myself at the table with those that are wiser than me. And so that that's where I'm going to learn. If I'm if I'm holding back and sitting at people that aren't moving me forward, then I'm I'm almost wasting my time. But I also want to know that my hardships and my struggles will help somebody else, you know, that maybe in that, you know, seat that I was, you know, 10 years ago or 12 years ago. And I've actually had the opportunity to do that recently help somebody so it feels good I don't I, I don't think I'm like the best spokesperson or anything like that but where I am passionate is my story is my story and if I learn something from it then I can share it and help somebody else Captain, I will tell you this I can promise you there's somebody listening right now and struggling in their marriage or struggling in their business, and you just gave them hope. Thank you. You, you, you're sharing that story emotionally felt. Somebody out there right now is gravitating to that, and you are making a difference. So thank you for being vulnerable, sharing that part of your life with other people. And this is what we do at Child Care Genius, why we're a little different, is we don't mind, as, as April Bender told me, because we take care of the whole person and not yeah. just the thing. It, and that whole person, there's a lot more than just your child care center. And uh, well, I'm glad we've been a small part of your life, but you've been a big part of ours. We want to thank you for that. And we want to thank you for coming on a Child Care Genius podcast today and sharing your story. Thank you all for having me. Have a good day. Bye. Thank you. Oh, I love Tapta. She's so sweet. That was powerful. She's um, a good speaker, but a great story. It was inspirational. And how about getting knocked down and getting back up? And that's yeah. tenacity and I call it like a, a bulldog, yeah. you know, don't back down and really just go for it. Um, and as you say, coaching has really helped her grow her business as well. We enjoy coaching her. And if we can help you in your child care business and you'd like to do a free coaching call with me, if you're a center owner and you've never done a call with me before, I'll get on a call with you, give you a free coaching call. Let us talk about two or three areas you're struggling. Let me set you on the course. Um, to greatness. It's a pleasure. It's a you you'd you'd be doing me a favor by me helping you because it's something I absolutely love and have the passion of doing. Uh go to childcaregenius.com under the coaching tab say I'd like a free coaching call and let's connect and let me help you out. Um so this concludes this episode of the Child Care Genius Podcast. Thank you so much again for inviting you, inviting us into your home or to your car or to your ear pods, wherever you're listening to us to today. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you won't miss a future episode of the Child Care Genius Podcast. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Child Care Genius Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please do us a favor and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss a future episode. Don't forget to visit our website at childcaregenius.com to see a list of services we offer to help grow your child care business. Until next time, thank you for being a part of the Child Care Genius community.